Happy Easter, y'all! Today we are throwing it back to the beginning of my channel days and we're entering back into our craft era! You guys don't even know when she started crafting. It was like a weekend thing. It was an all day expedition. All day, every day. <laughs> but today I am determined to make cute and easy and quick crafts. So guess where the first place we're going is? The queen of all crafts, Hobby Lobby. I think today we're looking for stuff to make our own doormat, to make our own wreath, vases and flowers, egg plants, shells. I feel like she's tackling too many crafts, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe a whole weekend thing again. <laughs> we will see. Maybe we won't get all of those, but those are our it's, info. Crafts always sound so easy, and then you start them, and it's like 10 hours later. So let's go inside. Came just at the right time. Mission number one. Oh my gosh, mother, look. This is just what we're looking for. They got egg shape, they've got carrot shape, and they've got Halloween. <laughs> what is this? This could be fun. Doormat time. We're gonna go with basic because we gotta DIY it. <laughs> be our guest, but leave by nine. <laughs> they got some good ones. All right, here are some of the things we're gonna need for our garland. And unfortunately, I needed white one color they don't have so i think we're gonna go with the yellow all right we're getting some spray paints for our doormat so i'm gonna make some flowers so we're gonna need green red pink and yellow but you can honestly do whatever color you want those are the ones i'm gonna go with picking out our twine for our little garland banister banner not banister uh, oh garland banner, banner. Look, you have to be so crafty to use all this. What? Um, I'm gonna go with this one, which is a lot. Looks like they're oh. wrapping around the jars and stuff. That's cute. That all right, it's the next day. A couple things have happened since the last time um, I talked to you. First of all, my left hand is unusable at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> That's because in Taekwondo spraying yesterday, I think I jammed these two fingers, so they're currently being buddy taped. <laughs> Mom wants to have a close up of this. Here you go, I just moved your hair out of the way. <laughs> Ew, it's so, it's so puffy. Okay, so I got Spock mode activated. Um, but I wanted to still work on the crafts because I'm excited about this. So we're gonna start on our doormat first. And what I'm doing currently is I'm trying to copy this picture I saw on Pinterest because I thought it was very cute and it's like screams Easter but not like too Eastery. Like I can use this for the whole spring and not just for the holiday. What I'm trying to do is draw those flowers out. I am not an artist, guys. I don't draw. This is why I'm a paint by numbers girly because I just fill in the blank. <laughs> but we're, we'll, we'll try our best. We'll see how this goes. I found that the best way to transfer it onto the uh, plastic stencil paper is wax yeah. marker. Because I've tried pencil, pencil does not work. Marker just like smudges. So if you're gonna copy this, you could either freehand it if you're confident like that. <laughs> just freehand it onto your project, but I literally, I need a stencil. As soon as this is done, we're gonna take that X-Acto knife, start cutting it out. So I got all of my flowers and we have them out over here. I've been kind of like eyeballing them to see like how tall they would be. They go up to about like halfway, which I think is cute. I think that's pretty fine. So now I am not gonna ruin mom's lovely table and I'm gonna use a cardboard and an exacto knife. This is uh, to be 10 times harder to do this with the scissors. Here we go. <sighs> this is stressful. I'm just gonna cut along the line and this is gonna be a process <laughs> all right we cut out all of our stencils and I might have had a little accident so I'm slowly losing finger abilities <laughs> we'll see what happens oh and then I lunged and I bit my mouth so really I'm just doing great here thanks for asking next <laughs> mom glued these little sticky dots to the back of this so that hopefully it'll stick to this mat so that the stencil doesn't move around while I'm trying to paint we're gonna test it out with the first one. We went with the outdoor paint. This is outdoor acrylic paint. So hopefully because it's outdoor, it doesn't wear down as easily, but we also bought this spray clear acrylic coating 
um, to go on top of it because a doormat is like everyone's gonna be scraping their feet on it, you know? <laughs> so hopefully, the, the goal is that they won't be scraping off my hard work. <laughs> We'll see, this is my first time ever doing something like this. This one says it's acrylic plus primer, so like I don't have to do anything beforehand. <laughs> but I'm just gonna be patting it down like this and... Yep, that's, that's, that's how it goes. I feel like Bob Ross crafting. <laughs> hey, look at that! Who's a pro, who's a pro? All right, I'm finishing up on the second flower. It's pink. I'm so pleased with this. Oh, heck yeah, baby cakes. And I lined it up good. I was worried about it not like, cause I don't have a ruler or anything to measure out the bottom spacing. I'm so happy about this. I was worried that it was gonna bleed and then I was gonna have a mess to like try to fix, which could still happen. But so far, so far it's turning out so good. It's almost done. Let's peel off our last one and see how it all turned out. <gasps> okay, let's let's take a look see. Hey, that looks good. It looks like it turned out all good. Wow, I am impressed I made this, guys. I made this, that's right. And that's coming from someone who has zero craftability, but who tries to be crafty. I'm gonna take this outside. We're gonna spray with a few coatings of this, just because it'd be so sad if all my work was for knots due to weather and people scraping their feet on it. <laughs> so craft number one is all done. Let's move on to our second one. Well, while we were working on the mat behind the scenes, Katie has been trying to figure out the pattern for our next craft, which is carrot banner and they are so cute this is our first this was our tester i am not a sewer i would love to have sewing skills so because of that we're gonna use liquid stitch so it's a mostly no sew craft all right i have four different fabrics i went to the craft store we have this one right here it's like a black and tan and white plaid i try to go for all plaids to match we have an orange, like a mustard yellow and white plaid. We have like this darker orange and white stripe. And then we have this tan plaid or checkered, checkered and green checkered. So the green is gonna be for all the carrot stems. And then we're just gonna rotate between the carrots and the banner. What I'm gonna do first. Hi, are you gonna be my assistant today? He's like, no more crafts. Okay, so mom went ahead and picked out different sizes. She figured out the sizes for the carrots. This is our smallest size. We're gonna make a large one. And I'm just gonna take a pencil and on my fabric that we folded in half, I'm just gonna trace this uh, outline of our triangle for the carrot. Also, while I was at the craft store, um, tell me why I didn't know that they were there are pre-made patterns to make your own clothes. I thought people just winged it until they like came out with something cute. No, they follow a pattern. And I kind of think it'd be fun to learn how to make my own clothes for the first time since I've never done that before and I have zero sewing skill. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Here's our triangle. Is this fabric scissors? Mm -hmm. Good, you're gonna want this. No, don't, don't, don't you grab your kitchen shears. I see you. I see you reaching for them. You want the fabric ones. <laughs> it makes it easier. Also, we got half a yard of each fabric, which should be plenty for this project. It is time to glue. So we have our outline of the carrot and we're gonna flip it inside out so we don't see our invisible pencil marks. <laughs> <laughs> the pencil marks are so light, but if you're perfectionistic, that's what you do. And then if you have chalk, and chalk would probably be nice, you can do that too. Glue along one side of your carrot, inside out, all the way up to the top. If you're sewing, you probably already know what to do, because you're probably a pro and you're like, <laughs> easy. But if you're not, this is what you're doing. Okay, then we're gonna flip it. This is my first time doing this, guys. <laughs> gonna glue my fingers together. <laughs> All right, while this carrot part is drying over here off to the side, we're taking our leaves that I just cut out. I cut it out into like 
whatever this looks like to you. It looks like a window to me, and half oval kind of. So I have like six of them here. I'm gonna take a pair, <laughs> go around this whole bunny ear thing, except for the bottom part. And then we're gonna sandwich it together onto our matching bunny ear. <laughs> Why are you guys listening to me? You should be listening to mom. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's just telling me how to do everything from behind the camera. <laughs> Let's be honest here. <laughs> okay, do I do that two more times? Do it two more times. <laughs> all right, I've been gluing away. As you can see, all these are still drying. We're gonna flip the ones that are dried inside out. And then you take your big old skewer for food <laughs> and you shove it out so it fills out. Don't break the glue. Wow, that's cute. <laughs> Look, it's a little mitten for your finger. <laughs> if you want to make a glove, make five of these, and then you sew them all together. Okay, <laughs> carrot time, and then I have to flip the other three. You know, you shouldn't have clicked on this video for a tutorial. This is me testing it out for the first time. You're not supposed to be learning anything. <laughs> if you've learned anything from my bake-offs, from my crafting, from my doing hair tutorials, it's all comedy. <laughs> It's not actual. I mean, sometimes it turns out. Anyways, it'll look cute, I promise. All right, mother informed me that the next step. <laughs> <laughs> the next step is, <laughs> is to take a glue and you do this. And then you fold it. Don't ask me why. I'm just doing it as a nose. So the case a little pleated. Aww. Oh, because it's two. But we're making three. The, the big carrots get three leaves and the small carrots get two. It's stuffing time, so I got my big giant bag of stuffing. Honestly, if you're balling on a budget for this craft, you can use your dog toy stuffings if they're not nasty. Or cotton balls. <laughs> it depends. Yeah, cotton balls, old stuffings paper from like... Towels. Oh, paper, paper towels. So many things. Old stuffed animal stuffings they no longer want. You can repurpose a lot of things. So now that this is all dried, um, I flipped it inside out, I'm stuffing it, and we're gonna finish them off before stringing them all together, which is exciting. It's finally looking like a carrot. Shove it down in there as best as you can. The carrot might be a little funky. All right, once your carrot is stuffed puff, you're gonna take your needle. Yes, we're gonna have to do some basic sewing now. If you really want that like, Snatch the look for the top of the carrot. So my mom helped me tie a knot at the bottom. <laughs> I'm glad I have injured. a I'm glad I have a buddy. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna just go in towards the top. Start on the inside, everyone. You're gonna pull through, and then we're just gonna do basic back and forth sewing. So I'm gonna put my needle in. It doesn't really the spacing doesn't matter super much, just as long as it's like every other so often. I'm gonna pull it through the other side and I'm just gonna go back and forth like that because eventually it'll tighten like that once I have a lot of them in there. But yeah, that's the probably the most technical part of this craft is this part right here of just basic sewing. So I'm gonna go around the carrot and then I'll tell you the next steps after that. All right, it's time to tie off our knot here. So I just finished going around and I poked it through the side, just right out the front again. And now I'm gonna have this part open. I'm gonna bring the back of the needle through it. And there's our knot right there. This is what it looks like now. Now we need to make the carrot a carrot. As you've seen before, we have our carrot tops. For our big ones, we're using three. So I want the pleated side to be the shown side. So I want all three pleats to be, is that what it's called, a pleat? Yeah, I don't know, it looks like of. a bunny ear. I want them all to be facing the same way. So I'm gonna glue them together first. So I'm gonna add some glue to the side of that right there. And then I'm gonna take it, my second bunny ear, place it right on top of that one, put some more glue, and then do the third one right on top of that one. Apply some pressure to your handshakes. Blow on it to make it go faster. <laughs> and then we're gonna glue this together. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your liquid stitch, you're gonna try to hide all these little scraggles at the bottom, Bob that right on there, just like that. Then we're gonna take this and we're gonna crunch it down, buoy it down there. <laughs> and then you're gonna put some glue on this. Perfect, just like that. And then you're gonna figure out where you want this to be facing. 
probably like right here. Honestly, mom can make it look really good. So she's probably gonna be the one to do the rest of them. But this is what she's doing basically. She's just like <laughs> wrestling that carrot in there. <gasps> Oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Ow! <laughs> this looks great. That's what it's supposed to look like, ladies and gents. So we got our large, medium carrot, and a small little baby carrot. And I'm gonna make a couple more, and then we're gonna bring them all together with our twine. and so fun, it's also 10 p.m. at night. <laughs> These crafts take a lot longer than you think, okay? <laughs> okay, so they're so cute. Like, look how cute these little carrots are. You can't tell me that it's not like Pottery Barn dupe. So I laid them out. I think in my house, I wanna put it at our TV stand, which is probably about the width of your fireplace. Like, that's the closest thing I could think of. So I kind of laid it out in front of mom's fireplace to see like the pattern I wanted it in. So I stuck a big carrot next to a little carrot and then a medium carrot and I just repeated the pattern with the different alternating colors. And now I'm taking my twine. I start in the middle and I'm working my way this way with a lot extra on the side I can snip off. And I'm just kind of like tying it a single tie in the back as I go and then like holding it up like this to make sure it hangs right. <laughs> So I'm just gonna strain these together and then maybe we can hold up to your banister and see how it looks in the end. And I think that's where we're gonna end tonight and we'll work on the wreath tomorrow, which should be, should be faster than these last two. Voila, here is our finished carrot banner. I think it turned out really good. I spaced them pretty far out so it's wide. I have some carrots hanging off to the side. So I can either like choose to tuck those in, let them hang or I can put it on like an either an even wider surface, like if I wanted to use my stair rails, but it's more art, mine's like a wall, but like a longer surface I could, or I can have it droop longer. I don't know. I think it turned out so cute though. Don't you think, mom? Yeah. I like it. It was a lot of work, but now I know how to do it. Next day, we're starting our last project, and that is the wreath. So, Picked up this like oval egg shaped one from Hobby Lobby as you guys saw, there was a couple of options. And I wanna be copying this picture I found on Timu. So we're gonna be making our own uh, egg inspired wreath from home. So for that, it looks like they have some green leaves. So I just bought one of these, which should be plenty. I bought this, they had a lot of different colors, but none in the white. So I got yellow because I think it still work. And then we need some speckled Easter eggs or whatever Easter eggs you want, whatever little thing you want to pop out. This is kind of what like makes it Easter. So if you want specifically for the holiday, some eggs. So this one should, should be pretty easy. I'm gonna start off by taking my wreath here and we're gonna start at one end. Just kind of lay out how we want it to look. It's just all about twisting and decorating how you want. So I do want like a little bit, it looks like this started halfway. So you have a little bit of this brown stick poking out. There we go, pretty simple. Okay, so let's attach this green part first before we worry about like the yellow and I'm gonna wrap it around to secure so it doesn't fling off during a windstorm or people opening up the door. That'd be so sad. Oof. Okay, so I'm gonna find a green part of my leaf and then just kinda get lost in the branches. The wire's so bendy. This is probably gonna be the hardest part. <laughs> just, just trying to fix it to the thing. Okay, don't try to go through the branches. I mean, you can but it's so much harder, so I've learned. So let me show you how to do it now that I've kind of mastered it a little bit, practiced. So I'm just gonna try to find a spot on here that's a that's like the main leaf. So the spot looks good right here. And I'm just gonna wrap it around like so, I'm trying to push these up above so it hides it. And then I'm gonna wrap it around this little 
part, flip it over to the back. She's gonna take her ends here, and we're gonna tighten it and twist it, like so. Just a couple twists, and then you can chop it and tuck it in so it doesn't scrape the paint off your door, because that would be a fun project to fix. All right, I think we got it. Okay, the greenery looks good. Um, we hid the wires by chopping some of our leftover greenery and just like shoving it in there and glue dotting it because this glue adhesive is pretty strong. So, can't really see the wires, which is just the way I want it. So next up, we're gonna take these little pearly beads, very spring, and we're gonna wrap it around this. So I'm gonna start underneath here so you can't really see where the beginning is. And then we get to play the fun game of twisty. So I'm just gonna not hit the lights. <laughs> We're just gonna wrap it around over and over again. Okay, getting the hang of this a little bit more, you just have to be careful of the little branches and tighten as you go. It's easier if you have it wound up still. Here we go. Finishing off. Also, don't wear a sweater when you're dealing with poke branches. Everything snags on it. I think that's, well, that looks good. Okay, I'm gonna cut this, tie it, and then we gotta put our finishing little dazzle on there, the eggs, and then we got ourselves a wreath, a homemade wreath. Okay, so next step, I am adhering the eggs with the glue dots, the same sticky glue dots. What are these called? Where's so the, the ones that we bought was the Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby. It just looks like this. But so far they have adhered so well. And I'm just sticking it to whatever I can on here, whether that's the sticks, the leaves. I think it's working best on the leaves. And myself. <laughs> so I'm just going to shove it down in there. We'll see how this holds up outside when it starts getting warmer. I'm hoping the glue dots don't become sticky again and then <laughs> Gonna add all the eggs in. Voila, our wreath is all completed. That's cute, okay. Pretend this is the front door. I think I'm gonna attach it with like some of that string I used for the um, eggs. Right there is your Easter wreath. Should we try it on the door? All right, this is what it looks like hanging up. So cute. And I'm excited for Easter and for all the spring celebrations now. Okay, that finishes up our third Easter craft. This video was so much fun. Definitely got me back into a, it definitely got me back into my nostalgic early years on YouTube where I tried to be a crafty queen. I feel like these are pretty beginner friendly crafts, especially for someone like me who's not like a pro crafter, doesn't do it a whole lot, but it was like very, it was very, Calming. Like I feel like I was in the zone. It might take it a long time. Just know that these these are kind of like a time-consuming project, depending on which one you choose. But all of them turned out so cute. I think I'm definitely gonna be doing the doormat again and maybe giving them out as like Mother's Day gifts or like birthday things. I don't know. I, there's so many possibilities you can do with that and so many different stencils you can make. So let me know out of the three things we did today, the wreath, the doormat, or the banner, which one was your favorite? And like and subscribe while you're there. We'll see you guys next.